every person and indeed every vertebrate animal is born with a population of T cells and B cells and we call these lymphocytes each of which has its own unique antigen receptor gene that was generated by the random combinatorial DNA rearrangement. So each of these cells are expressing on their cell surface their own antibody or their own T cell. Now in their so-called naive state, meaning they haven't ever seen an antigen before, they do nothing they just hang out in the body in lymph nodes or in your skin or uh, in the intestinal um, epithelium just waiting around for antigens to come along. When the body is invaded by microbes, whether we're talking bacteria or viruses or uh, foreign molecules including toxins, these circulate through the body through blood or lymph and they encounter various T cells and B cells. Most of these T cells or B cells will have antigen receptors that can't bind these uh, microbial antigens and again they'll do nothing. But those few T cells or B cells whose antigen receptors can bind this foreign antigen will be stimulated by this binding they will be selected and stimulated to begin dividing. They'll enter mitosis, they'll produce lots of copies of themselves, they will become activated, they will produce antibodies uh, and produce killer T cells uh, to combat this infection. This should remind you of evolution. In fact, much like evolution by natural selection where we have random genetic variation where random mutation produces lots of genetic variation um, and then uh, there is natural selection for uh, the genetic variants that are most adaptive. Here we have again a population where there is tremendous genetic variation in the antigen receptors and those cells whose antigen receptors can best bind to foreign antigens are selected to proliferate. So we have the uh, immune system is evolution by antigen selection. Oh, but wait, that would be too easy if antigens could directly select B cells and T cells. <laughs> no, uh, to just to make it more complicated uh, and make life more difficult for immunology students, what we have is a situation where especially T cells, their T cell receptors cannot bind antigen on their own. Their T cell receptors can only bind antigen that has been processed and presented by MHC molecules. So MHC stands for major histo compatibility and these are cell surface proteins and there are two types of MHC proteins the class 1 MHC proteins are present on the surfaces of all cells in the body they are sort of a form of an indiscriminate antigen receptor they bind uh, they're not specific for particular antigens. They bind lots of different antigens. What they bind are peptides in their antigen binding pocket. And the class 1 MHC molecules present on the surfaces of all cells in the body, they bind peptides that are generated from inside the cell. So intracellular peptides are bound by class 1 MHC molecules. How does that work? Well, the cell makes its own proteins encoded by its own DNA. These proteins function and then they become damaged over time. They're wet, they wear out. And when they become, uh, and in that uh, state, they sort of unfold. And then they're sent to a cellular recycling center called a proteasome. 
And as they are fed through the proteasome, the proteasome chops up the protein into small peptide fragments, 10 to 20 amino acids or so. And these peptide fragments are loaded up onto class 1 MHC molecules that are being synthesized in the rough ER. And that this class 1 MHC plus peptide complex goes through the secretory pathway and ends up on the cell surface. There on the cell surface, these MHC class 1 proteins with associated internal peptides are inspected by cytotoxic T cells. And we'll talk more, more about cytotoxic T cells in a bit. Okay. So that's class 1. Some cells, these special cells called professional antigen-presenting cells, and that's what APC stands for, are antigen-presenting cells. And these include B cells and cells, uh, phagocytic cells called macrophages and dendritic cells. They have this, in addition to class 1 MHC molecules, they have this additional class 2 MHC molecules. These class 2 MHC molecules specialize by presenting external or extracellular peptides. How do they present extracellular peptides? Well, here's our diagram. These are phagocytic cells, so they're so. Uh, through either phagocytosis or endocytosis, they bring in extracellular antigens. So this is extracellular antigen. And this could be a virus particle, uh, a, a whole bacterium, or foreign proteins. And inside, uh, once they have been endocytosed or phagocytosed, they merge with a lysosome, and the lysosomal enzymes break up the antigens into small fragments. Again, these are peptide fragments. And these peptide fragments get loaded onto class 2 MHC molecules and end up on the surface of these antigen-presenting cells. So this is an antigen-presenting cell. Okay. There, the antigen on the class 2 MHC molecule is inspected by CD4 plus T cells, okay, which will become helper T cells. So if the CD4 plus T cell, uh, has his T cell receptor recognizes this antigen bound to the class 2 MHC molecule, then this T cell then becomes uh, stimulated, it becomes activated, it produces signaling molecules called cytokines. The cell divides and produces uh, T helper cells, also produces memory T helper cells. One other analogy that I like to uh, make is that these class 1 MHC molecules right, are uh, both an ID badge, because there's lots of different variants, of, uh, genetic variants of these uh, MHC molecules in the human population. So uh, each person basically has almost a, a unique uh, uh, set of MHC molecules. So this is one way that cytotoxic T cells can inspect all the bodily cells and see whether they have the right MHC molecule. If they have the wrong MHC molecules, the cell is recognized as foreign and killed off. Okay. So these class 1 MHC molecules serve as a badge, but they also serve as trash cans in a way because they display cellular junk. Okay. So these are internal peptides. Um, that are generated from worn out uh, cellular proteins. So they essentially display cellular trash. Okay. And what happens is that the cytotoxic T cells inspect the ID badges to make sure that the uh, cell actually belongs, and then inspects what's in the trash can to see if there's anything suspicious going on.
So going back to uh, activation of the CD4 plus T cells, recall that a foreign antigen or an extracellular antigen is internalized by these antigen presenting cells and uh, processed, meaning the antigen is broken up into small fragments and presented on class two MHC molecules okay. on the cell surface. This is the T cell receptor on the CD4 plus T cell. Uh, it recognizes it. The CD4 T plus T cell becomes activated. It uh, divides, proliferates, and produces signaling molecules, or it's primed to uh, produce signaling molecules. B cells can also act as antigen presenting cells. Uh, they bind the antigen molecule on their cell surface antibody. This binding internalizes the antigen protein and becomes processed inside the B cell and again presented on the surface of the B cell in association with a class II MHC molecule. This activated T cell now comes along and sees this B cell presenting uh, the antigen that it has uh, bound on it. Okay. And if the uh, T cell recognizes that antigen, it produces cytokines to st stimulate this B cell. This B cell, in addition to producing the cytokines, also has the same antigen bound to the antibody. And the B cell is now receiving two signals, antigen bound to its cell surface antibody plus cytokines being produced by an activated helper T cell. And then that stimulates the B cell to undergo proliferation. Some of the progeny become differentiated into plasma cells that produce lots of uh, soluble antibody molecules. And then other progeny become long-lived memory B cells. These memory B cells can last in the body for decades. Now here are the killer T cells. As I said before, the killer T cells are inspecting the ID badges, the class 1 MHC molecules. They're inspecting the cellular trash being presented by the class 1 MHC molecules. And if the T cell receptor recognizes um, this antigen being presented by a class 1 MHC molecule, the cytotoxic T cell uh, will do two things. One is it sends out signaling molecules, which are death signals. These death signals bind to cell surface receptors present on these cells and induce them to undergo programmed cell death. This is called apoptosis, and it's a pathway of cellular suicide. So the cytotoxic T cell signals the target cell to kill itself. If the cell refuses, or just in case the cell refuses, the cytotoxic T cell also uh, releases a bunch of, uh, of enzymes and proteins that form pores in the target cell membrane and causes the cellular contents to leak out and the cell to lyse. Okay. So either through apoptosis or lysis, the target cell is killed off, and then the cytotoxic T cell goes off to inspect the next cell. All right, what's the point of cytotoxic T cells killing off cells that their T cell receptor and, uh, recognizes? You have to understand that cytotoxic T cells whose T cell receptors recognize the body's own proteins never make it out into the circulation. They are killed off during T cell development. So the body normally does not have any cytotoxic T cells whose T cell receptors recognize normal cellular antigens. But what if a cell has been infected by a virus? Now it's making viral proteins inside the cell. And some of these viral proteins are processed and presented on class 1 MHC molecule. That means now there's a chance that 
one of these cytotoxic T cells will come along whose T cell rec receptor recognizes the viral antigen and then kills it off. So this is a way for these killer T cells to inspect the body's own cells to see if they're making something that they're not supposed to be making, meaning they're making possible viral proteins or even mutant proteins that might lead to cancer. Recall that cancer requires uh, multiple mutations and meaning that they will be producing uh, proteins with altered amino acid sequences and these altered amino acid uh, sequences uh, will produce abnormal peptides that could be recognized by a cytotoxic T cell which will then kill off the cancer cell. The cytotoxic T cells also require activation or priming by helper T cells. So uh, we discussed previously how helper T cells produce cytokines that activate B cells. Cytotoxic T cells, in addition to their T cell receptor recognizing a foreign antigen, they also require cytokines from helper T cells for them to actually become fully uh, stimulated and kill off target cells. So helper T cells then are required to activate both the humoral branch of the immune system and the cell mediated branch of the immune system. And the distinguishing factor between helper T cells and cytotoxic T cells is that helper T cells have this molecule here labeled CD4. And the CD4 is a receptor for the HIV virus. So the HIV virus selectively infects and will kill off helper T cells and any other cells that contain the CD4 cell surface protein. And that will help you understand how HIV brings about immunodeficiency in infected patients.